Hello everyone. Today in this lecture form of module one, we are going to study, discuss in in a little brief about the complex representation of the the band pass signal, and we'll come to know how this uh, time and the frequency domain procedures will determine the complex representation. As in the earlier videos, we have discussed about the the Hilbert transform. and uh, we had a brief uh, discussion also about the envelopes the pre envelopes of uh, the positive and the negative frequency also we had a discuss brief about the canonical representation so in all short so the basic prerequisite required when you go to the on the video so at first the complex low plus representation of the band pass signal so when we consider a narrow band signal s of t with its fourier transform s of f we assume the spectrum of signal s of t is limited to frequencies plus or minus w hertz of carrier frequency fc where w is less than fc so what is this fc is the carrier frequency so which will be usually we consider it as a standard when we had uh, decide uh, discuss it in the the canonical representation there So now let the signal s of t be applied to the linear time invariant band pass system which has an impulse response h of t and a frequency response h of f So we know this uh, what is this impulse response the characteristic we know that h of f is h of t will be is specified at only one domain only one at point so we usually consider this uh, impulse response for the system when you represent it in the the frequency uh, domain that we represent consider as the frequency response and we write, denote it in terms of h capital h of f we assume that the frequency response of the system is limited to plus or minus capital b of a carrier frequency fc so this is telling that we shall having a range of a plus or minus p so we can have a on the left hand side of the that is on the negative side and another on the positive side but when we consider the bandwidth we consider as a plus b minus of minus b so that time it will be a 2 db the system bandwidth what we consider for this plus or minus b will be a 2b usually it is usually a narrower than or equal to the input signal bandwidth so it should be almost equal to this 2w it cannot be greater than this one it can be equal to 2w or less than 2w not more than 2w here now this band pass impulse response h of t is represented in quadrature phase component h capital i of t and h q capital q of t we express h of t as h of t is equals to h capital i of t into cos 2 pi f c t minus h capital q of t into sin 2 pi f c t we consider this as equation 17 we define this complex impulse response of a band pass system as h cap of t is equals to h i of t plus j h q of t now we may express this h of t in terms of h cap of t as h of t is equals to real part that is the real part of a h cap of t into exponential of j 2 pi fct we consider this as a 19 here h i of t that is h i capital where i will be capital i and h capital q of t and h cap of t are all low pass function limited to a frequency minus b less than or equal to f less than or equal to capital b now we consider this equation 19 now we consider this equation 19 so you can see it here it can be expressed as that is 2 h of t is equals to h cap of t into exponential of j 
टू पाई एफ सी टी प्लस एच कैप स्टार ऑफ टी दैट इज ए कॉम्प्लेक्स कॉन्जुगेट ऑफ दिस एच कैप ऑफ टी इन टू एक्सपोनशियल ऑफ माइनस जे टू पाई एफ सी टी दिस इज हाउ वी रिप्रेजेंट दिस सो हाउ दिस हेज ऑकर इज द इज द फ्रॉम दिस इक्वेशन नाइनटीन ही नाउ For, because of this, for introducing this factor two on the LHS follows from the fact that if we add a complex signal and its complex conjugate, the sum adds up to the that twice the real part and the imaginary part cancels. So that is why we have considered H of t in the term multiplying the factor of it two as the imaginary part was cancelled here. Now. Applying 4a transform to the both the side of uh, equation 20, and we get it as 2 h cap capital H of f is equal to capital H of cap into f minus f c plus h cap of conjugate into f minus f c, and this we are implementing using the complex conjugation property here. That we consider as <laughs> equation 21. Here h of f. is nothing but can be represented as a h of t and h cap of f can be represented in terms of a h cap of t okay this is what the thing this is the time domain uh, frequency domain and another is the time domain and this equation 21 require satisfies the requirement that uh, h conjugate of f that the h star of f is equals to h minus of f for a real valued impulse response h of t since h cap capital h cap of f represents a low pass frequency response limited to mod of f less than v with v less than fc so this is how we satisfy with respect in terms of a low pass equations then now this equation 21 become h cap of capital h cap of into f minus fc is equals to 2 times of capital h of as per the earlier discussion there this equation 22 now states that for a specified band pass frequency response h of f we may determine the corresponding complex low pass frequency response h cap of f by taking the part of h of f defined for positive frequency and shifting it to the origin and scaling it by the factor 2 this is what it is trying to say it here so as uh, we know that we are considering only for the positive frequency we take it in twice of that one and and we are multiplying this part two and we shifting it to the origin here here we are not considering f minus fc because we are considering the fc as a zero having the complex frequency response h cap of f we decompose it into its in phase and a quadrature phase component as shown by h cap of f is equals to h cap of i of f plus j h cap of q of f where the in phase component is defined by h cap of i of f is equals to half of h cap of f plus h cap of star minus f this is the in phase component this is the equation 24 so i am Consider then this here. When you take, we represent in terms of a the short we can say h cap of i of f. Similarly, for the quadrature phase components also, we define by h q cap of f is equals to one by two j because the quadrature phase is accompanied by the complex part here. Then the h cap of f minus j h cap of star of f minus f. This is equation five, twenty five. now this complex impulse response of h cap of t of a band pass system we take the inverse f of t we take a inverse f of t that is sorry for a transform of h cap of f by obtaining that is the h cap of t is equals to which is integrated from minus infinity to plus infinity capital h cap of f into exponential of j 2 pi f t Into df, and this is the desired I of t. 
that's the inverse power transform so what we are doing here we are taking the component we take only the real part of the the hmm, only the real part of the the equations and we try to try to represent it in terms of a in phase component and also in terms of a the quadrature phase component so that's the advantage here so we can get only the the required component so we can eliminate the negative unwanted components there now we try to put this in terms of a band pass signal and all together how to do it so do you derive this an analytically efficient method for determining the output of a band pass system driven by a corresponding band pass signal there are two methods carried out that is one is the time domain and other is the frequency domain as we know that little complexity in doing this all equation in the time domain will consume more time also require more steps there but when you compare to the frequency domain the steps are less and we get in more efficient way so we we'll look into the time domain procedure and also the frequency do domain procedure and then we try to compare what we have initiated earlier is that true or false now for the time domain procedure assume capital s of f denoting the spectrum of s of t and capital h of f denoting the spectrum of small h of t both are centered about the frequency fc so we have to take a common point so we can compare those things let x of t denote the output signal of the band pass system produced in response to the incoming band pass signal s of t you can see it in the figure when s of t the spectrum will be given it will be analyzed with the or it will multiplied with the h of t that is the system impulse response it is going to multiply them and that is what we are getting as the output and that is we will represent in terms of a low plus a complex envelope s cap of t and which is also expressed as x of t is equal to real of real part of x cap of t into e raised to j 2 pi f t that's the equation 1 now this output signal x of t is represented in terms of the convolution integral as x of t is equal to the integration of minus infinity to plus infinity s s into s of tau into h of t minus tau that is into d tau also we can represent in terms of x of t is equals to minus infinity to plus infinity the integration ring h of tau into s of t minus tau as d tau this is equation 2 we can remember this convolution integral in the terms of the the signals there where we usually take for the continuous signal as the convolution integral and for the uh, for the uh, discrete signal we consider the convolution sum there so this is what we are considering the uh, the continuous signal so we considering it in terms of a convolution integral here and when we represent in terms of a free envelope h of t is equal to real part of h plus of t that is the the positive frequency or we consider that the pre envelope of a positive frequency is here or s of t is equal to real part of s plus of t that is real part of a uh, the positive frequency of the spectrum so we are ignoring the negative frequency here so we are considering only the positive frequency then this equation 2 will represent in terms of a that x of t is equals to minus infinity to plus infinity that is the real part of h plus of t into real part of s plus of t minus tau into d tau actually this should be at tau here this should be at tau now now to proceed further we make use of the basic property of a free envelope as described below here how that is a minus infinity to plus infinity of a in integration real part of h plus of tau into real part of s plus of tau d tau that is half of a real part of a, the integral of a from minus infinity to plus infinity h plus of tau and into s plus of star tau that is a complex conjugate of s plus here and into t tau so we are considering the thing and this is what we take it from the basic property of a free envelope what we have studied in in a 
the video the that is the previous lecture lecture 2 of a module 1 there so this is we have to be a pre request which has to be known while solving this one also from the the fourier transform theory we know that using s minus tau in place of s tau has the effect of removing the the complex conjugate on the rhs of equation 4 so that is why we are using this kind of a equations there now this equation 3 can be expressed as x of t is equals to half of real part of minus infinity to plus infinity h plus of tau into s plus of t minus tau d tau that is equals to half into real part of minus infinity to plus infinity h, h uh, cap of tau into exponential of j 2 pi f c t tau into s cap of t minus tau exponential of 2 uh, j 2 pi f c t minus tau into d tau that is half into real part of exponential of j 2 pi f c t integral from minus infinity to plus infinity h tau into s cap of t minus tau d tau so i have considered only the this h of t into s cap of t minus tau h cap of tau and s cap of t minus tau here so this is what i am taken it outside here now comparing the rhs of 1 and 5 we find that for a large carrier frequency fc the complex envelope x cap of t or p output signal is simply the convolution of the the complex envelope s cap of t then the output of the signal that is the what we got is s cap of t and the complex impulse or response h cap of t of a band pass system as follows s cap of t is equal to half of integration from minus infinity to plus infinity h cap of t into s cap of t minus tau into d tau that is equation c so now we are taking simply the half into h cap of t into convolution simply convolution there into s cap of t that's the equation 7 now what we have done the all the procedure we are representing in terms of a the just a di uh, diagram there you can see it here the input band pass signal s of t has been taken here and it has been given to the band pass impulse response of h h of t so this is what the system what is really the impulse response h of t then here the complex envelope of the input s cap of t that is the complex impulse response of the h cap of t that is of the system so system has a, both the response one is on a natural impulse response and another is the complex response and they both have been mapped they both have been mapped if you take here only the output signal then x of t is equal to h of t into s of t simply the convolution but when we scale it the complex envelope of the output to x cap of t we get in 2 x cap of t is equal to h cap of t into s cap of t so this is how we are getting it back here so looking at the diagram instead of seeing all the process we can look at this diagram and we can start explaining the each process of a time domain procedure there of a complex low plus representation there now this complex x cap of t and h cap of t in terms of in phase and quadrature phase component so then the equation 7 becomes 2 x cap of t is equal to h cap of t into s cap of t now this h cap of t represented in terms of in phase and quadrature phase that is h i of t plus j h q of t into s i of t plus j s q of t so this is what it is trying to say that convolution since the convolution is distributed as we know that now this equation 8 can be represented to simply the the real part and another the complex part the real part can be represented after multiplying here to x cap of t that is h i of t into s i of t then h i of t in j s x q of t so that will come here the h i of t plus j s q of t so i have taken j outside next one j h q of t into s i of t this one now j h q of t plus j s q of t uh, h q of t plus s q of t so j into j is a square root of minus 1 the whole square so minus h q of t plus s q of t so that has been come here even you can do it the multiply normally when we can then try to simplify so i have done it directly here now this is we consider as a equation 9 here 
Let the complex envelope x cap of t of the response be defined in terms of its in phase and the quadrature phase components as x cap of t is equal to xi of t plus j x q of t. That's equation 10. Now I'm trying to compare equation 9 and equation 10. So here I can get 2 xi of t. That's the in phase component. That is h i of t into s q s i of t minus h q of t into s q of t. This is the in phase component here. Then 2 x q of t is nothing but h q of t into s i of t plus h i of t into s q of t. So this is another thing. So this is how we are getting it back here. So this is why equation 11 is the in phase, equation 12 is the the quadrature phase. So again we go for this kind of a manipulation. So we looking at this diagram we can see here. So thus for evaluating the, the in phase and the quadrature phase of the components of the complex envelopes, x cap, x cap of t the system output, we may use the low pass equivalent model as shown here. This is the figure here. All the impulse responses are real valued low pass signal. Thus the band pass system are simplified with the band pass signals in the time domain procedure. So this is what the time finally the time domain procedure. So you can see it SI of T multiplied with HI of T and HQ of T. So one component will be with respect to in phase another with respect to the quadrature phase. Then another XQ of T here again the one is the quadrature phase which is uh, related to the in phase component or the output. Another is the in HI of T which is the related to the XQ of T. So here the minus symbol represents what we have represented the minus here. So this in short we are saying that this program is illustrating the relationship between the in phase and the quadrature phase component of the response of the bandpass filter and those of the input signal. So this is the, the system and this is the, the input spectrum. So when we merge it and we can get it in differentiating the in phase and the quadrature phase component there. Now, this was we looked into the, the lengthy time domain procedure now. Now, when we go for the frequency domain procedure from directly from the figure to what we had studied earlier, we can write 2 x cap of t is equal to x cap of t into h cap of t. Take for a transform on both the sides, capital x cap of f is equal to 1 by 2 into h cap capital h cap of f into s cap of f. Thus assuming that h of f is known, we get h of f, we know that the frequency domain procedure is summarized as below. We have some steps there for computing the output x of t in terms of the response of the system s of t. You can see this is the, the procedure there for computational analysis of the, the band pass system driven by a band pass signal is given by use h cap of f minus f is equal to fc is equal to 2 times the h of f for f greater than 0 to determine h of h cap of f then. then evaluate the complex envelope that is x cap of f uh, s cap of t is equal to si of t plus j sq of t and compute its Fourier transforms to get x cap of f s cap of f is equal to Fourier transform of s cap of t now compute capital X cap of F is equal to half of H cap of F into S cap of F which determines the Fourier transform of the complex envelope X of X cap of T of the output signal X of T here. Now compute inverse Fourier transform of X cap, capital X cap of F yielding small X cap of T is equal to Fourier inverse is equal to capital X cap of F. Then, then compute X of T using X of T is equal to real time of a real part of the x cap of t into imaginary e to the power of j 2 pi f c t. So this is another short precision in the frequency domain. But when you compare in the time domain, we what we did, we went on to the each and every process. We try to eradicate the the negative part there and we take on only the, uh, the frequencies there. And uh, what we done there, we usually calculated only the um, the time domain and that is for the real part and then the real part we consider then we calculate with respect to its uh, uh, the what we say that as uh, the in phase component and the quadrature component then we try to merge 
and then we got uh, and we um, sustained a, a model there. With the model, we could analyze it easily. There, what it was, the different stuff for complex and then the different stuff for normal envelopes. Then we need to merge and we could get a different procedure. But when we did it for the frequency domain, we did it a simple step. There. We taken the h of f by neutralizing f greater than 0, f to 0. We determined h cap of f. Then what we did? Then again, we differentiated it the, the spectrum, the given input spectrum in terms of in phase and the quarter of phase. We calculate the Fourier transform, then we took a half of that and defined and we got the com complex envelope for x of t. And then we again took a inverse Fourier transform there. So both can be done parallelly and we can get, but when we compare the in the step of step, the, we feel that uh, the Fourier transform in the frequency domain was the efficient. Usually the Fourier transform we calculate in terms of a, the frequency domain, the time domain we usually utilize the the computation methods there. So this all the brief idea what I uh, discussed earlier before starting in the time domain and the frequency domain. So it depends on your computational skills and the computational analysis method what we require. We, we can go either for the, the time domain procedure and we can go for the frequency domain procedure. So this is was all about the, the complex and uh, complex representation of a low pass signal there. So here, so we can find a, some kind of a glitch here to in order to calculation and all. But if a Fourier transform is properly known, we usually utilize the, the frequency domain analysis for most of the thing. We cannot differentiate saying the time domain is best, we cannot say if the frequency domain is best. But it usually we go in terms of a, the application specific task there. This was all about the complex and, uh, representation. So here we require some kind of a prerequisite when we go for the uh, time uh, time domain also and when we go for frequency domain also. So we require some prerequisite about the, the P envelope. Okay, thank you here. So this was all about the complex envelope with the respect to the prerequisite of the, uh, the uh, time uh, domain uh, with respect to the P envelopes. Thank you once again.